angry ecologist here to review the new movie Prey. Here are my top issues with the movie. Number one, nature as modern society perceives nature. For a film set hundreds of years ago in a more natural America and involving Native Americans in the production process of the film, I was sad to see the film continue to portray wildlife the way Hollywood always seems to. That nature wants to kill us. That's the top priority. And when they're not killing us, all the animals are in the process of killing each other. The mindless, violent desire to kill is demonstrated to us in several ways. When we are introduced to different species in the film, they are in the process of killing something else or have already killed something else. The animals are so into killing that they abandon the food that they just got in order to go continue killing. They are also so intent on killing that rather than choosing self-preservation when encountering some new, strange, invisible foe that would have actually sent all of these animals running out of confusion and fear, they decide to fight. I even have a problem with how the rats were portrayed. Will a rat eat your flesh? Sure, eventually. They don't come running the second that the bait is put out, especially when the bait is still alive. It would be one thing if she used bait that the rats are accustomed to eating, something that's a part of their normal diet. But, you know, this is just like showing the rats as, Mmm, man flesh, our favorite. We've been waiting for man flesh. As if that's a normal part of their diet. Even the Native Americans are portrayed as seeing nature as the enemy more than showing us reverence or coexistence that the Native Americans had for wildlife. Sure, they ate animals, but consider the following. Every living species we are shown in the film, the Native Americans are trying to kill one way or another. Was there any other sort of relationship? Kill the deer. Kill the rabbit. Kill the hawk. Kill the mountain lion. Try to kill the bear. And, of course, the mountain lion and bear desperately want to kill the humans. Even though, in reality, the bear and the lion would steer clear of humans when possible. The narrative of, oh, there's a mountain lion out there, therefore we need to go kill it in order to be safe. And there's a bear out there, therefore we need to go kill it in order to be safe. Caters to the ignorant, disconnected, modern perception of nature. Not that of indigenous people. I'm not saying that bears and mountain lions laid at our feet for belly rubs, but it also wasn't like this. The only way to coexist isn't by removing the other animal. The inability to grasp this is why we are in the sad state that we are in today. I also wasn't a big fan of Nauru being shown to wipe out an entire community of rabbits in one hunt. That strikes me as representing wasteful, unnecessary, over-the-top, unsustainable killing, not survival. The film was so desperate to show Nauru as the best at everything that I wonder if they showed all of these dead rabbits just to drive home, look, she's the best at this also. And that was so important to the writers that they forgot that it also made her look like a wasteful killer. It actually made her seem more like the French trappers and fur traders. And we will circle back to this topic of her character. I was actually really disappointed to see National Geographic write a glowing review about the accuracy and see all the praise that Native Americans are giving this film. Because it was more important that they were shown to use toothbrushes than to accurately portray a relationship with nature. Next, the future is in the past. And this predator is just a cowardly bully. So the feral predator isn't very feral. He is supposed to be more primitive. This is supposed to be hundreds of years before the first predator movie. And yet this predator still has all the technological advantages as well as even more that we hadn't seen before. That's not very feral. And this predator is pretty unlikable. He proceeds to kill all sorts of different creatures that he couldn't possibly have perceived as worthy opponents or threats all while remaining invisible and using his specialized weapons. Pathetic. He proceeds to use all these advantages against bows and arrows as well. 
I also have a problem with how sterilized and perfect Predator's ship and homeworld are made to look. It's what a modern human disconnected from nature would consider to be a comfortable living environment. But the Predators look like they would be more at home in a cave or a tree, a jungle, etc. Isn't the recurring theme through these movies that the Predator is a wild jungle hunter who knows how to take advantage of those sorts of surroundings? Not someone who lounges around in cities of technology without a speck of dust on the ground. So it's always bothered me that these Predators are shown living in places where we would consider to be a comfortable living, but not really where the Predator would probably choose to live. Next. Norm's storyline is kind of ugh. Her need to prove herself overshadows the fun of a Predator movie. The arguments about whether or not she's capable of this or that come up not once at the beginning, not twice, but over and over and over. I mean, we get it. Do you have to shove it down our throat? Does she have to talk trash the entire film? I mean, she's really demonstrating insecurity by the fact that she even kind of belittles a beaver in her need to show how great she is. And she talks trash to this lowly trapper at the end of the movie, telling him that she's a great hunter, even though he can't even understand the language she's speaking in. What the hell do you care what this lowlife thinks? And just to give you some perspective on how over the top the film went with making this character perfect, well, by the end, she is the best tracker, the best hunter, the best hand-to-hand -hand combat fighter, the best axe thrower, the best weapon inventor on the spot, the best medicine woman. She is impossibly fast. She is impossibly agile. Speaking of, that leads to the next problem I have with the film. A few random silly moments. Naru and her brother apparently have one foot in the matrix and one foot in reality. And the horse? Well, that's a special breed that doesn't make any sound with its thunderous hooves until two feet away from the target. Nauru can casually walk and yet cover hundreds of meters in only a few seconds. She also defies time by doing tasks that would take an entire day without the sun even moving. Next, the relationship between Native Americans and plants. The film barely showed this relationship other than the use for medicine, especially in a rivered forest area, still unspoiled. These people would have had access to all kinds of food sources. But again, the idea of humans being carnivores that require more meat than even lions is what Hollywood shoves down our throats. But even in the medicinal part, they made a mistake. Why did she uproot the plant? and then start picking the flower petals immediately after. Can't you just pick leaves off of a plant while it is still alive and in the ground? I would like to think she would take a few petals from one flower, a few petals from another flower, not dismantle all of them, and come back when the plants had reflowered. That's the beauty of perennials. They just keep giving and you can just keep taking without killing. Now check out the look of disgust on her face. This is right before she abandons gathering the medicine and picks up her axe to go and try and kill a deer. I get it. You want some variety. You want to try something new. But there is an underlying message being sent out here that there isn't real value. There isn't true value unless you're out there killing an animal. You aren't a true contributor to the tribe unless you're getting meat. Anyway, I believe the Native Americans were a little better in touch with the role that the plants played in the community of other animals, rather than just going and killing them whenever they needed them. Again, this represents modern, monocultured harvesting rather than coexistence and foraging. All right, what are your thoughts? What do you think about my grievances with this film? And that's only some of them. I have a longer version, which is less polite if you liked this and would like to hear more. Just follow the links.